Biryani is often positioned as this volatile compound that will blow up if instructions aren't followed exactly. It is thought that you need an unholy number of spices in your pantry to make and that the effort will take hours and hours on end. Let's change that together. At the highest level, to make biryani, you just need to combine partially cooked chicken gravy with partially cooked rice and let them steam cook together to completion over low heat. If you break that down, you just need four steps to get there. Number one, you prepare and pre-cook some ingredients. Number two, you fry the chicken with some aromatics, spices and vegetables to make a gravy. Number three, you parboil the rice, which is a fancy way of saying you don't cook it all the way through. Number four, you layer the rice and the chicken gravy together and let them steam in a large pot. So if you know how to chop, fry and boil food, you're well on your way to making some really good biryani. Here onwards, to make the recipe simpler to replicate and the ingredients simpler to purchase, I voiced over instructions for a biryani batch of one medium sized chicken that's around 1 to 1.2 kilos even though I am making a bit extra. Start with the whole skinless chicken that is cut into 12 to 16 pieces. You should be able to find such a chicken at any Asian supermarket if you ask for a curry cut. Alternatively, you could also use skinless legs and thighs. Now to start marinating the chicken, add 150 to 200 grams of yogurt. The yogurt will act as a great binder for the spices to come. Then we put in about 2 tablespoons of ginger and garlic paste. Making fresh paste is ideal, but to make this recipe more pantry friendly, we can definitely use them from a jar. Next, let's add around 10 grams of salt to the chicken. There will be more salt coming in the recipe later, so this much is fine for now. Next, add 20 grams of Kashmiri chili powder or any other chili powder that is available for you in your area. Mix all of that in thoroughly and cover it up and set aside for about 20 minutes while we prepare the rest of the ingredients. Try to make sure you do not overdo the amount of yogurt you put into this recipe because that can result in clumpy rice at the end. Now on to cook the onions which are the first thing I recommend you cook when making a biryani. For a 1 to 1.2 kg chicken, I recommend about using 300 grams of onions which can loosely be two small onions or one very large onion. Fried onions are one element where I strongly recommend a non-pantry friendly solution. Pre-fried onion packets are quite tasteless and most of their volatile aroma molecules are long gone by the time you open them in your kitchen. Pour a large amount of oil, approximately 250 grams into the pot and start to cook. Don't worry, none of this oil will be wasted. Once the onions are in, add a little bit of salt, 3 to 4 grams into the mix enhances the taste of onions a bit further. This is especially nice if you end up snacking on a few of those onions. Now on a medium heat, the onions will take about 10 to 15 minutes to cook. Keep stirring them occasionally and remain diligent so that they don't get burnt which is quite a risk the more you get into the 10 plus minute mark. The reason we pre-cook onions rather than cooking them directly with the chicken is primarily because we are aiming to par-cook chicken and onions take quite a lot of time to brown and fully caramelize. If you don't use pre-cooked onions in the gravy, you'll end up with onions that are completely raw and not entirely desirable or palatable in the final mixture. Once the onions are 90-95% to 95 ready, take them out as they will brown further with a bit of carryover cooking even when they're outside of the pot. I recommend using some form of a slotted spatula to pull out the onions because this way we're able to let a lot of that excess oil stay in the pot. Now at this point we have our absolutely beautiful crispy onions ready. Drain the oil left from frying the onions in a heat safe container. We will use this later to cook the chicken and eventually even to coat the rice. Now before we start to cook our chicken, let's make sure all of our other ingredients are prepped so that we do not need to panic at the last minute. For 1 kg chicken, you can use about 400 to 500 grams of tomatoes but since I'm making close to 2 kgs of chicken, I'm gonna use 2 cans. I'm going to crush the tomatoes with my hands so that they cook much faster than they would otherwise. We want our tomatoes to cook all the way through while our chicken cooks up to around 80%. I do not recommend using largely diced or whole tomatoes in the biryani mixture. Once again, I used canned tomatoes to keep this recipe pantry friendly but you can definitely use fresh tomatoes as well. Just avoid tomatoes that are specifically bred to be more sweet and less acidic. Next, let's clean up the rice. I'm using long green basmati rice which works really well with biryani. A note on washing. Please make sure to wash the rice thoroughly to get the water running clear. I had to drain the water about 10 times to get it as clear as I wanted it to be. Rice that is not properly washed and overly starchy will result in a very clumpy texture in the final product which is something we want to avoid. 
Lastly, let's prepare the potatoes. While potatoes can be a bit controversial in a biryani, they are, I believe, the heart and soul of any biryani dish. Try them out as instructed in this video and I'm willing to bet that you will change your perspective. The secret by the way is to cook the potatoes with the gravy rather than boiling them separately. From here onwards, we can complete the biryani in about 60 to 75 minutes. To get started, I'm going to add a 50-50 mixture of the used onion oil and fresh oil into a wok to start to fry the chicken. Aim for roughly half a cup of oil in total. See that oil splatter from nearly 2 kilos of chicken? Yeah, don't do that and put the pieces one by one, laying each piece away from yourself. Once the chicken is in, you cook it for about 5-10 to 10 minutes to get some brown. At this point, you add the biryani masala and yes, I'm using a store-bought pre-ground biryani masala mix. It's completely fine to do so and trust me, the end result will be pretty damn good. I know biryani purists are going to say that you should grind a fresh biryani masala and that it makes all the difference in the world. While that may be true, I don't always recommend this to someone starting out for three reasons. One, for a beginner, the investment into a ton of different spices is often not worth the reward. You learn more from improving your technique first rather than going through the intimidating effort of making a better spice mix. Secondly, you may not have access to all the spices required to make biryani masala where you live. Black cardamom, mace, mango powder which are used in the biryani masala are not always accessible, especially in the western part of the world. Third. You may end up getting low quality spices to begin with and not know how to deal with them and therefore end up making something that's just not as good. Add tomatoes a few minutes after having added the spices. This is because tomatoes bring down the overall temperature of the pot and release water. This will halt the blooming process which is not something that you want immediately after you added your spices. A couple of minutes after adding the tomatoes, you can then add in the potatoes as well. Let these cook down for a few minutes and then add the onions which are already pre-cooked and therefore will not take very long to completely get incorporated in the gravy at this point. From here on now, we'll cook this chicken mixture for another 10 to 15 minutes so that neither our chicken nor our potatoes are fully cooked. The complete cooking of both of these biryani essentials is going to happen with the pak cooked rice in a steam setup. While the chicken is still cooking, let's put a pot of water on the stove to let the water come up to a boil. The quantity of water that we use will be 4 times the weight of the rice that we plan to cook. Therefore, if you're using about 600 grams of rice, aim for about 2.5 liters of water or more. Okay, now that the chicken and the potatoes are looking ready, let's bring on the pot of water that we had okay. set for boiling onto the main stove and start to cook the rice. To parboil the rice, start by salting the water first. We'll use about 25 grams of salt for 2.5 liters of water. You essentially want approximately a 1% salt solution for the rice. The process for parboiling rice is very similar to the process for cooking pasta for any Italian sauce based pasta. If you don't salt the water, your sauce is not going to be able to make up for it. In addition to the salt, you should aim to add the 6 ingredients listed on screen. But if in a pinch, aim to at least get the cloves, cinnamon and cumin in. If you have none, you could get away with just salt but at that point you're likely to be missing out on some flavor. Add the spices in and quickly add in the rice next. As soon as you put in the rice, the boil will immediately die for a bit but then come back up. Keep the flame high during this process because you want the rice to come back to a boil as soon as possible. Once the boil is back, let the rice cook for another 3 minutes and at this point you can pull out a small sample of rice to see if it's sufficiently par cooked. It should typically be crumbly on the edges while being a little soft in the middle. Okay, three minutes have passed and I'm checking the rice and I can see that it's roughly 60% of the way cooked, which is exactly where we want it to be. However, if the rice is already fully cooked, it'll get thoroughly overcooked when it's mixed in with the chicken and let to steam for another 30 to 40 minutes. Therefore, if your rice is completely cooked now, you might as well save it for something else, maybe an egg fried rice the next day and, and use another batch of rice for biryani. Drain the rice through whatever means you prefer and it's now time to layer. Now, for the layering, Take the largest, widest pot you have and layer about 40% of your rice at the base. Follow that up with about 50% of the chicken gravy that we had made. Top it up with another 40% of your rice and follow it up with the remaining 50% of your chicken gravy. Now let's add the final remaining 20% of our rice on top and add any bits of the remaining onion oil that we have all around the rice. If you use less oil to fry the onions and don't have much left, it's okay to garnish the top of the rice with about 4 to 6 tablespoons of fresh oil. Now, close the lid. 
If you have a heavy leaded pan, you can get away without using a tea towel and this whole mixture will steam effectively and work well. However, if you don't have a heavy leaded pan, I recommend you add a tea towel on the top of the pan, followed by the lid, followed by something heavy that will help trap the steam. Oftentimes people will have a mortar and pestle in the kitchen and that can work quite well here. Now once you have this setup ready, use medium heat for about 4 minutes to get everything up to temperature again. And then move this pot to a low heat stack setup using a large flat pan. Now if you do not have another flat bottom pot, there is no need to despair. You can just keep the heat extra low. From here on it's just a waiting game to let the rice and the chicken flavors assimilate together for about 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, you are ready to have biryani. Take off the lid and appreciate the stream and the smell that immediately releases when you do that. Lastly, take a big spoon or a spatula and start to move the different layers of the biryani around starting from the bottom. Congratulations because you have made a pretty damn solid biryani.